Hello, and welcome back to Hey It's a Good Life, and welcome to our video on underwater basket weaving. Okay, obviously I'm kidding. In case you missed the title, today's video is all about building for the homestead. <laughs> now, seeing as I can't actually really see out of these protective eyeglasses because they've gotten so much use out of them, I'm just gonna go ahead and take those off. Vest and hard hat not required, but we'll leave them on. Welcome back to the collaboration I'm working on with my friends to bring you the hottest content in urban homesteading. We've been working diligently on this series. This is part four of five whole videos dedicated to urban homesteading, helping people wherever they might be, get started growing food, building things, living a more sustainable life. It's totally possible wherever you live, little choices add up to big change. So just get started somewhere. One of the places I got started was learning how to build things. Just two years ago, I had no building knowledge, know-how, experience. I built some houses in Mexico, but I mean, beyond that, had just about nothing going for me. And believe me, I learned a lot of lessons the hard way. And so today I'm here to share with you my top 10 homestead tools and checklist. We're gonna talk about all of the homestead tools that I use the most around here, how I've used them to build what you see all around us. And um, if you want a copy of this, you can go to my blog, heyitsagoodlife.com and check out my latest post, top 10 homestead tools, and you can download this for free. Uh, it's got clickable links, so if you need any of these tools and you want to support us, you're welcome to use those links. Um, but yeah, let's just hop right into this. And before we hop into things, did you guys hit that subscribe button? Did you hit the like button? I sure hope so. All right, let's hop in. All right, so number one, eye protection. Now, as I mentioned earlier, these bad boys have been used up and well loved. You can hardly see through them. They are so scratched. Super, super, super important. I sustained a really serious eye injury in Mexico when I decided not to wear my protective eye wear and dust from the fiberglass in the drywall got behind my contact and cut my cornea up. Gave me an astigmatism, super exciting. Highly recommend wearing eye protective wear, protective eyewear. <laughs> um, next up is protective earwear. So ear protection, ear plugs, anything that's going to buffer your little eardrums from the sound of drills and saws and all the things that you might be using on your homestead. Take it from me as somebody who has tinnitus, who's married to somebody who has tinnitus, which means that there's like this insatiable ringing in the ears that never really goes away. You want to take care of your ears. You only get one body. And I'm learning that it's better to take care of that body rather than think that you're invincible. So get yourself some eyewear and earwear for the homestead projects you are about to take on. Next up on the list, tape, tape. <laughs> Next up on the list, tape measure or measuring wheel. I have both. Tape measure is cool. Measuring wheel is even cooler. Um, a tape measure is going to come more in handy for, you know, flat things, shorter things. But, but if you need to measure a large area like a backyard or a piece of property, I would really recommend using a measuring wheel. And you can see how I use that right here in this video, planning our potage and our garden. Um, it was really helpful because I actually learned that this space is not even, go figure. It's a foot wider in the front of the garden than it is towards the back. And if I had not had that tool, I wouldn't have known that. So it's a handy little tool, highly recommend for those big spaces. But for building projects like working with wood, a tape measure is probably going to be more effective. Miter saw or jigsaw. Now you could also throw a circular saw in here, but I'm not familiar with the circular saw, so I did not include it in my list. Although I do know that that is also a very handy tool to have on the homestead. I am more familiar with the miter saw and the miter saw is what I've used to build pretty much everything here. And it's not even one that we own. It's on loan to us from our neighbors. And it's taught me a lot. It's taught me a lot about properly building things, cutting things at angles, and what I want in my eventual miter saw when we buy one. For example, the one that is on loan to us right now, it's a little too short and it doesn't have a pull action on the saw. That has made things a little tricky for cutting. And so I would really recommend if you're going to invest in a miter saw, get one that's 
perfect for your height and one that also has a pull action. Now, if you're like, Natalie, I cannot spend that much money on a miter saw right now. I feel you. I was able to accomplish a lot with just the jigsaw. In fact, I built all of our original garden beds on the apartment patio, borrowing my mom's skill jigsaw. And let me tell you, it was janky, okay? It was janky, but it got the job done. So again, it's totally possible. If you don't have the tools that you need and you can't buy them, do what we've done. Borrow from a friend, borrow from a neighbor. See if you can kind of exchange for tools. Um, there's lots of creative ways that you can get tools for your homestead projects. You just have to be willing to think outside the box a little bit sometimes. Oh, okay, this next one. Drill, impact drill, and drill bits. This by far is my most used homestead tool. It is what I've used to build every single project here. Every single garden bed, the greenhouse, uh, it's how we drywalled uh let's see is it yeah it's how we drywalled the uh, garage when we finished the garage for our landlord uh it's a huge deal to have a drill so if you are going to start anywhere with tools i would say start with a drill start with a solid drill and i would say get a drill if you're gonna get some kind of drill combo, because there are drill combos out there, like you can get a drill and an impact drill, or a drill and drill bits, or a drill and a battery pack. I would lean first towards getting a drill with drill bits. But my next favorite thing about our drill is the fact that it has two batteries and a charging station. So that means that if I'm in the middle of a project, I can just switch the battery out and there's one ready to go that's already charged up. No waiting for charging, which is really nice when you're in the middle of a project and you just need to keep going. You know, you don't want to lose that momentum, that steam, that time. Super nice to have an extra battery pack. Uh, but you know, if you can get some quality drill bits with it too, like why not? So yeah, you can shop around for a good combo on any of those. Um, an impact drill is also a great thing to have on hand. I tend to pre-drill with the regular drill and then drill with the impact drill. Now an impact drill is essentially, you know, impacting the screw little by little. And I feel like that has proven difficult for me at times when I'm using that little bit, the star bit that comes with most deck screws, which we're going to talk about in a second. Um, that the impacting and the torquing and everything, it actually tends to slowly but surely erode away at the star bit and there ends up being like little metal shards and that's not good like we don't want that that's no <laughs> and it gets stuck and it gets hot so i'm not a pro when it comes to using the impact drill yet but i will say it has saved me time versus you know pre-drilling with one drill and then taking off that drill a bit and then adding the bit back it's just that's a lot of work it's totally possible i've done many projects like that but it's nice to have two drills because then you can just pre-drill with one drill with the other and it saves a lot of time and just a pro tip on drill bits the better quality that you can get the better it is for you now you are going to eventually break drill bits at some point in your building career so just know that at the get-go like it's gonna happen things get really hot when you're drilling a lot and things get really hot when you're drilling a lot little song <laughs> my little homestead building song anyway yeah so they can get really hot they can just pretty much just crack right in the middle of your project and i've had you know like drill bits drilled into wood completely shattered in the middle and stuck in the drill at the same time so take it from me they're gonna crack get some quality ones if you want to avoid that but i don't think you can avoid it completely just just a word to the wise <laughs> Ooh, next up all right now this is something i really undervalued in the beginning of my building career uh is a level and a carpenter square now you don't see me use a carpenter square in a lot of my build videos because i don't really like them i prefer using a level um, now using a carpenter square is, well, a really great way to get things square. However, I prefer using the level because then I know that everything is, well, <laughs> level. <laughs> um, so for me, the level just works better for like my way of working, my way of viewing things. But if you're wanting to square things up like really easy without any kind of clamps or anything, a carpenter square is a great way to go. It's got measurements on there. It's a great way to cut angles. So 
Carpenter Square might be a better way to go for you, but again, like a level, not very expensive, and it's very handy for more than just squaring things up. You can make sure that your projects are level, which is also going to ensure that your projects are not going to warp over time. The more level and square and just, you know, all, all the right angles line up, the better your project will do over time. So it's really important that your projects are squared up, lined up, cut to the right angles, and all that jazz. Okay, so my friends that I'm doing this collaboration with right now, are messaging me because I sent them a picture if I should do the entire video dressed like this or just the introduction and as you can see we've made it halfway through the video and I'm still dressed like this so <laughs> only if you have a tool belt to go with it says Josh okay funny he should say that because little does he know tool belts on the list not quite there yet so anyway let's move on to the next one shall we but we'll wait for the plane. Cool, 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 cool. I've always lived under the flight path, so welcome to life under the flight path. I seem to have always lived under one. Makes filming so fun. Okay, the next one is orbital sander. Now, if I could never sand anything again in my life, I think I might be a really happy camper. It's literally my least favorite activity when it comes to building things. However, it is very important to sand things for a couple different reasons. First off, if you want any of your wood projects to last the test of time, weather, heat, rain, sun, you know, expansion, compaction, all of that, it's gonna be worth your while to sand. And I learned that the hard way. My first garden beds rot. I also let those screws rest and we're gonna get on to that point in just a second. Um, so anyway, my first garden beds, not so hot. Didn't use the right, didn't use the right tools on them and I learned some lessons. So take it from me, it's worth it to sand and use an eco-friendly stain if you can find one in your area. If you're gonna be using stain on your garden beds um, or just around the house, like it's gonna be worth your time to get a nice orbital sander to sand things, prepare things and get that stain in there really nice. All right, next up on the note of using the right tools. Now, let's talk a little bit about hardware. Now, this isn't really like a tool, right? It's not like a machine, but I wanted to make a point about this because using the right screws for your projects is so important. And I learned this the hard way. I'll never forget in the middle of a rainstorm and then we had Santa Ana winds at our apartment homestead and my farthest garden bed completely collapsed to the ground and I was devastated. I was like, what happened? How did that happen? And well, learned the hard way that I used the wrong kind of screws, they weren't galvanized, and they rust. They rusted really fast. In less than a year, they rusted. I mean, it was only like five months that the garden beds were up before we moved anyway, and they rusted big time. So I highly recommend using, if nothing else, galvanized screws. Um, that have a nice coating on them, but I recommend using deck screws. I mean, deck screws are literally designed to beat the test of time. They are designed to be weatherproof. And what's great about deck screws is that sometimes you can get away with not pre-drilling. And so you can sometimes save an extra step. Now, pre-drilling kind of ensures that you're not gonna split your wood. So you're running the risk if you're wanting to avoid pre-drilling completely and get deck screws for that reason. So I would recommend like just do one test run, you know, in some inconspicuous spot in the project and see if you can get away without pre-drilling. I tend to always just pre-drill just to be safe, but sometimes I'm feeling really lazy and tired and I don't pre-drill and I just use deck screws and it works out fine. So up to you. Ugh, chicken wire. Again, not a tool, but I bought chicken wire once two years ago and guess what? That chicken wire is still serving us today, folks. I bought a 150 foot by six foot roll of chicken wire and had it delivered to our apartment. And I'll never forget how heavy that package was and how obnoxious it was in our apartment stoop. I was like, wow, that's a big package. That's obnoxious for an apartment. But I knew that eventually we were gonna move and eventually like we were going to need more of this material and being a minimalist, Tommy and I tend to want to make one-time purchases of quality items versus things that are not so quality and having to buy multiple of those. Like that doesn't make sense to us. We would rather save, 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 save and then buy one really quality product once and then call it good. So. 
I would say buy in bulk when you can. Not that we can always do that all the time, but the chicken wire has served us well and I still have some on the roll that I'm going to be turning into tomato cages here actually this week. So it's super versatile. I've used it to trellis things. I've used it to keep pests out and this week I'm building tomato cages with it. So stay tuned for that if you're interested. Oh yes, not quite last or least is bolt cutters. Now, little note on bolt cutters, just go big or go home with the bolt cutters because you never know when you're gonna upgrade to hog panels and cattle panels like you see behind me. Um, it is so handy to have a bigger bolt cutter on hand because the tiny ones just don't do the trick on the bigger items. So it's worth it to spend the extra 11, $12, whatever it may be, if you're able to, to get the better, bigger, batter bolt cutters because long term you might be able to use them on more projects so just a word to the wise on that one bolt cutters have been super helpful for cutting concrete remesh hog panels cattle panels chicken wire it's a little overkill for chicken wire you can pretty much use scissors on chicken wire but um yeah definitely uh definitely get yourself some really good bolt cutters last but not least on the note that josh made only if you wear a tool belt. Now, I actually don't own a tool belt, but I have linked one here for you if you wanna check it out. That's the one I would get myself if I were to buy one on Amazon. Um, the thing about tools and tool belts, it's really nice to have your tools with you and near you when you're working on a project, just right here, you know, in your pocket. Like, that is so, so nice. I've gotten away with using grow trays. Like I'll literally go to the garage, take a grow tray and like fill it with the tools that I need for the day. And then I just keep that grow tray near me, like wherever I'm working, not the handiest thing. You know, you have to lunge and like get it and bend over. Whereas if you just had a little tool belt, you know, you'd be set, it'd be right there. So I just think I've never felt comfortable like wielding one. I just never crossed my mind that I, I might need one or that I could benefit from one. I don't know. It just occurred to me when I was working on this article for you guys on the blog and for this video, I was like, you know what? A tool belt would be really good to have as a homestead item. So that's it. That's my 10th one. That wraps up this video. Um, if you want to see some of the things that I've built around the homestead, I'll go ahead and link some of those videos right here. I have built lots of things here with my own two hands. And I hope that encourages you that if you're a woman, if you're a novice, if you don't have prior know-how, like you can absolutely build things. Like I've got a greenhouse over here. I'm surrounded by garden beds that are still standing after our spring rains. And like, they're still going strong, you know? Like we've built lots of things here and we're not experts. We're, we're like you guys, we learn from YouTube. and. <laughs> We give it our best shot, you know, we put in the time, we try to learn our best, and then we give it a go. So I would encourage you guys to do the same, you know, do the research, put one foot in front of the next, and see if you can't make something that is really nice for your homestead. So that's all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you feel encouraged. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, all that jazz. And be sure, be sure to check out the blog to download your free PDF checklist of my top 10 homestead tools. These are the things I wish I had from the very beginning that I hadn't chinsed on. Uh, so yeah, thanks so much for hanging out with me. It's been great to be with you guys and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.